So then we are back with more understanding from the time of the second tabernacle services where then we find where we are at in terms of the scripture in the time of the end. The Mashiach is always then the center focus of the entire understanding because he always leads people to the Torah, to the instructions and the Torah is indestructible. So then having these in mind Every area of the Torah and of the prophets and of the writings and then the second tabernacle services writings including then the transitional time from the first and second services the entire situation is then related with the Torah mostly then regarding Leviticus the 23rd chapter so no person can take the scripture for his or her own gain and then People are led truly as per the Messiah's desire, leading the people as then shepherds lead the flock. So then the Messiah was explaining the many areas related also with the cities. And later Shaliak Shaul did give the understanding of the hope of the Gentiles. Try to understand this factor. The hope of the Gentiles. And then the hope of the set apart always related with both of them relating themselves with what the Messiah said he was given then the understanding and the delegation of the responsibilities to the set apart so they would form holy tabernacles and lead the Gentiles there is no other hope other than understanding what the Messiah said for them both to do if you are a person then always expecting other people to give you what only Yahweh through the cities can give you, then you are insane. The Messiah gave specific instructions on how to receive nourishment from the holy cities, so then whatsoever the Messiah said via his Father, via his Spirit, these are how people should receive from heaven. However, heaven has a way of teaching via the cities and not hurting other people. So then, from this viewpoint, when the Shaliak Shaul was explaining in Romans 7 what it meant as he was always trying to do what the Torah stated, but every time he was in the flesh, he could not do it. Same way, people, they have the best intentions of doing what the Torah states to do, but then they find themselves always blaming other people, always trying to find fault in somebody else, always trying to read and they don't understand, always trying to find some sort of a problem in somebody else's life, and then they find themselves precisely during the time of Shaliak Shaul in Romans 7. They truly try and try and try and try and they find themselves always short, always having only option of blaming other people. And they perking themselves up as then self-righteous people, as the leaders of the law during the time of the Messiah. It is precisely the same situation where then people rather than obeying what the Messiah said and confronting and reading the scripture, understanding the holy cities, understanding the hope of salvation via the cities, then they find themselves short always. And then they blame other people. All oh, because this person is this, that, and the other. All oh, because this person then doesn't understand. All oh, because this person is the evil person. All oh, because this person then this, that, and the other. Always trying to find fault in somebody else's life. But they don't take the time and do what the Messiah told them to do. Reading the scripture per Hebraic understanding because the Messiah wasn't a Hebrew person. But then they read the scripture from the scandalized scripture from the Greco and the Romans. And they try to get the understanding from the Messiah. And they always find themselves short. Always trying to find a person to put the blame on. Rather than understanding the scripture and then using whatsoever the Messiah taught for their own lives. So then, after they confront their own evils, so then they can become a light to others. But they don't produce fruit. That's the problem. They persecute those who are of the Messiah and they do not produce any fruit. 
The Messiah was very specific. He was divine. And the Messiah said, if a person is not a divine and is not loyal to what the Messiah said regarding the cities, speaking as Gentiles, then a person is a walking branch, does not produce fruit. So then the person is destined for burning. Because salvation is dependent upon the loyalty. Many scoundrels and teachers, they teach once you are saved, you are saved. You can change your status. Absolutely wrong. You are saved as long as you are loyal to what the Messiah told you to do. Otherwise, then Yahweh the Father comes around and He prunes away those bad branches that do not produce fruit and they burn. He is speaking of a person that is no longer saved. Try to understand what the Messiah said. And rather than step back and only observe what's going on around. There are people, they are absolutely experts and only step back and only observe what goes on. But then you are in the category of neither hot or cold and you are vomited out of the Messiah's mouth. Because you are a fruit expector rather than being a fruit yourself teaching and then sharing with others. Always trying to find fault. When a person comes to you, what does it mean salvation? Can you truly explain what it means salvation from the Messiah's viewpoint? From the Messiah's understanding of His holy tabernacles? Can you understand the power and the authority was given to Him in heaven and earth? And then He told His people to go around and form holy cities? Can you explain this scripture for what it is? And then when you do, and prior you begin your sharing, do you have any gifting? Because as you can understand, when a person is doing then teaching and sharing with other people with authority from heaven, you have to have a gift. You have to have a endowment from Ruach HaKodesh or the Holy Spirit, so then what you speak produces fruit. Ah... So how do you explain salvation from the Torah? Because you can explain salvation regarding the second tabernacle services or any part of the autumn feast without pointing the people back to the instructions. What do you think you do when then you begin to speak of salvation to other people? You are pointing people back to the instructions. However, the scoundrelized scripture and those who are of the devil, they always use the scripture for their own gain. Does the gospel of prosperity, do they point people back to the instructions? No. They speak of a fable. Doesn't exist. The Messiah outside of the tabernacles does not exist. How are you going to explain then salvation to other people and they ask you the hope of salvation when you do not point people back to the instruction? That's why we, our country is so replete with denominations and scoundrels and pastors and teachers and evangelists. They should never do it, yet they do for their own gain. There you are, working and making your living, you're always giving your 10%. And the Messiah and the order was, once a year you give your 10% to the city. This was the meaning of it. Once a year during the Feast of Tabernacles, you give your 10%, and then every month you put away your 10%, and then once a year you give your tithes, then to the city. And what our country has done, has come up with a religiosity, where people are constantly working, constantly giving money to these scoundrels. Because this is what they are. The Messiah said to give to the city. Because he was the living Torah, and in the law, or then in the words of Yahweh, you find the instructions to give once a year. So then the whole situation then, people always trying to find some sort of a fault. Precisely as these people of our day, acting as during the time of the Messiah regarding the religious leaders. People are religious around trying to find fault. This is what they are. Precisely as they're in the time of the Messiah. And the Messiah always confronted them in the scripture. 
He was never speaking of himself. And whatsoever you hear in these videos, you always find pointing back to the instruction. Pointing back to the Torah, pointing back to Moses, pointing back then when Moses went up to the mountain, he received the holy laws, came down, instituted the first service, Yahweh was in charge of the tabernacle of the first service, then came the temple. Yahweh the Creator was there in the temple in charge. Nations would flock to him and they would get their answers from Yahweh, making inquiries. His son came, he completed his spring feast, found Leviticus. He brought the first anointing for the second tabernacle services, and then the Messiah had taken place of his father. Thus, when the Messiah said, If you destroy this temple, he was speaking of himself in the Holy of Holies. We don't relate with the Messiah as temple as he was. Are we tabernacles? No, the Messiah is a tabernacle because he had taken the place of his father. Then whatsoever Moses told his people to do and observe, related to what Moses told them to do, they would do in the future as cities. So then, where is your teaching regarding the scandalized scripture? There you are, you have no authority, you have no power to explain because you are a blamer. You are always trying to find fault in somebody else's life. You find yourself as the religious leaders of the time of the Messiah, always trying to find fault in the Messiah. It is incredible how people, they don't have the proper understanding of the scripture, and then when they find themselves short, they always resort to blame. And then they begin to find schemes to get rid of the person. You know what this is? Murder. This is what you do when you are against the words of the Messiah. It is not then related with what a person is speaking of the Messiah is doing. Because you are speaking with people that are imperfect. Not perfect whatsoever. However, you always do not admit your own faults and you try to find fault then a person is speaking as then the leaders of the time always trying to find fault in the people speaking of the Torah. Not only then people don't understand takanot masim, they don't understand what it is. But then they make this cop out excuse all because the laws were abolished. All the laws were abolished? I thought to myself then, is not the Takanot Masim where the Messiah said they would be at liberty then to obey what Yahweh had to say? Except the Takanot Masim as it is recorded on the original manuscripts? But then a lot of people, they are lazy, they don't study, they don't want to study, they don't want to find out, but they love to blame other people. And when they are asked, what is the hope of salvation, they never point them back to the instruction. Because they do not have instruction. They are of the devil. They don't understand that in the flesh resides evil, but they do not want to confront. That's the situation. They don't confront their own flesh. Oh, they want to weasel their way through, and they want to be, uh, you know, making friendships with the world, and then the world, they get up from the world a bit, and they get from heaven a bit, and sometimes when heaven gets tough, they begin to understand it from the Messiah, if you point, oh, that's kind of a hard, and then they go with the world's flow, and go on and so on and so forth, and then the Messiah say, you're neither hot or cold, you are vomited. Because you can't serve both of them. You have to serve one or hate the other or vice versa. Then can you explain truly the hope of salvation and the Messiah as per then the instructions? We can barely get our nation to get privatization going so our country at least can return to the economical stability. We can do even what is the most popular and the most sensible step of a stabilization of a country. We don't even know how to do secular work. As a nation, we don't even know how to do it. The most obvious situation regarding the section of Gentile living from the 2,000 years granted to the Gentiles when he spent time with Samaritans, 
We don't even know as a nation how to maintain our own country. The people do not even have the power to influence and mandate the government to privatize the other agencies to make sure that the government is relieved from burdens. And the people don't even know how to do the basics. But then they find fault in somebody else's life regarding the scripture. It is amazing they don't even know the scripture. They don't know what the Messiah said. They don't know how to explain. They don't know how to point the people back to the instructions. And when related with the secular work, they don't even know how then to influence the government to reduce the expenditures so then the economy would improve. They don't even know how to do their work. It is incredible. Never in my entire life believed in other nations before, it is unheard of of being doing so much and then being in a country where the economical crisis is so bad and the government does not privatize. It is absolutely insanity. The first order of the agenda when the country is in crisis is privatization. Get rid of any federal agency that does not produce does not profit. Get rid of them. Give only then a bid. Make sure private companies, they gather around, they put a bid on, and then the agency is sold, and they only receive a protocol from the government how to run it, and then send a report for a fraction of the cost. We do not even know how to do this. And then can we explain salvation? No, every time they hear the truth, they persecute the truth. As the leaders of the law, the law means the scoundrelized law. We are not speaking of leaders of the law from the time of the Messiah implementing what Yahweh had to say. Oh no, you are mistaken. Because you are not aware of Takanot Masim. There were more than 10,000 laws during the time of the Messiah. And... The people of the law, they influence in trying to force their own laws upon the people, not Yahweh's laws. And Yahweh Yeshua did such a great job, you don't even find anymore the laws, junkies of the people of the law on a word, do you? Sometimes you do. The washing of the hands, for instance, and then you find when there was the relationship over there, the ceremony of the People of the law, those big pots of jars, those were junky laws and they have no authority. That's why when you come around trying to blame other people because of your problems, you try then to find fault in somebody else's life because you refuse to understand the true scripture, then you blame other people. You always blame it from behind. But then when you take your step then to influence your own country on how to change, then you go with the flow. And our government, scoundrelized government, does not even know how to put limits and then privatize and get rid of these agencies. They don't know how to do it. Because they treat the government as a club of friends. Try to understand, it's not a government, it is a club of friends. They are part of their own club over there and heck with the rest. They don't care. They have their own club and the country is outside. This is the way it works. And then, if you do not even have a hope of the Messiah understanding where the Messiah comes from, then you have no hope. Because the basics, what you should be doing as a citizen, and then influence your government, then to privatize and lean up this monstrosity of government, you do not even have the power to do it. Did you realize it? And then when you speak of salvation from the true viewpoint of the Creator, you can't explain either. So then do yourself a favor. Buy yourself then a Aramaic copy of the Word and study. And may the Messiah speak with you regarding, and you know what? He's going to point you back to the instructions. 
as per the second tabernacle services, so then at least, though in Gentile living you can't influence your own government, at least you can learn how to save people properly. Please stay tuned.